One of the best ways to speed up your developer workflow is to get into the habit of writing scripts. By doing so, it can enable you to easily automate any repetitive tasks you might have. However, when it comes to choosing a language for writing these scripts in, we're typically only left with a couple of options. We can either use Bash, which honestly I really like. However, the syntax is a little strange compared to other programming languages. And you often have to make use of other CLI tools, such as JQ for parsing JSON, or a database driver such as PSQL if you want to integrate with a Postgres database. Another option is to use a scripting language such as Python, which can also work. As it's not my main programming language, however, it can take me a little bit of time to figure out what dependencies I need in order to complete a simple script. And I often find that pip is pretty much unusable, at least without using a virtual environment. Personally, I've always wondered if it would be easier if we could use a programming language such as C, Go or Rust, especially as I use them in my day to day. However, because these languages require compilation, it means they're not really able to be used for single file scripts. Fortunately, that's where this project comes in. Script is Toe, which allows you to write single file scripts using compiled languages. Let's give it a go and see how it works. To begin, let's start out simple and create a script using the C programming language. In order to do so, we first need to install script is Toe on our system. And the simplest way to do that is to use Cargo. Once it's installed, you can then create a new script file using the same extension as is typical for the programming language. In our case, that's a .c. Let's go ahead and open this up in our text editor. With our file opened, now we can implement a simple hello world, which in C is as follows. In order to turn this into a script, however, we need to add the following line to the top of the file, which is known as a shebang. This line tells our shell which process we want to run the script. In this case, we want it to be script is toe. With this line added, let's open up a new terminal window and attempt to run this. First of all, we need to change the permissions on the file to be executable, which we can do using the change mod command. Now we're able to run our script like so, which unfortunately causes a build error. This happens because script is toe can't just build our files for us. Instead, we need to define some configuration inside of our script. We can define this configuration using our language's comments by first adding in the following line, which tells script is toe where the configuration begins. Underneath this, we can then add YAML key values to make up the configuration, with our first value being the script source key. In this case, it's the script.c file. Script is toe calculates a checksum from this file to see if it needs to rebuild the script which it does so using the next value, which is the build command. In our case, we're using Clang to compile the script.c file into a binary called script. That's all we need for our configuration. So in order to close it off for script isto, we then add in the following line, telling the tool where the configuration ends. Now, if we head back on over to our other terminal window, we should be able to run this script using the following command. And we see hello world printed to the console. Pretty nice. Let's expand this script and get it to print hello to our username. To do this, we'll need to pull out the value from the user environment variable. And to do that, we can make use of glibc. This can be achieved by adding in the following changes. However, when we try to run this, we'll see that the build fails, letting us know it can't find the glib.h header file. This is because, unfortunately, we're using C. In order to rectify this, we need to modify our build command. Again, this is pretty simple. Well, as simple as it is with C. We can just use package config in order to add the necessary flags into our build command. Now, if we head on over to another terminal and run our script as we did before, it should now work as expected. Pretty cool, but not exactly earth shattering. For a simple hello world, it's definitely going to be easier to use something like Bash. However, one thing that isn't easier in Bash is dealing with JSON responses. Although this is not really easy using C either. Instead, let's take a look at another language which is much better suited for network requests. Before we do that, however, let's take a quick minute to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a learning platform which enables you to learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in maths, data analysis, programming and AI. The platform encourages you to learn a little every day, which is one of the most important things you can do, both for your own personal and professional growth. By providing fun and interactive lessons, it helps to make the entire process as streamlined as possible. As well as providing courses on fundamental topics such as math and data science, Brilliant can also enable you to start learning the foundations of programming. And by selecting the Programming with Python course, you can get acquainted with writing actual code, learning essential coding elements such as loops, variables, nesting, and conditionals, enabling you to write scripts without having to learn C. So to try everything that Brilliant has to offer, free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash dreams of code. 
or click the link in the description down below. You'll also get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. A big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. The next language I want to look at is Go, mainly due to the comprehensiveness of its standard library. To set up a script for Go is pretty similar to how we would do for C. All we need to do is create a new .go file, fill out our shebang at the top, and then write our code as we would do normally. In this case, I'm sending up a network request to an API I've been writing on my Twitch streams. You can find a link to my Twitch in the description down below. As we did with C, we also need to set up our script is to build configuration through the use of comments. Fortunately, the build command is a little easier to do in Go than compared to C. Now I can run this script and it'll send off the HTTP request to the server. Pretty great. For me, Go feels like a pretty good choice to use for writing up a script. Although personally, I think it would be easier to use the go run command and maybe just avoid script is to altogether. So perhaps Go isn't the best language to use for scripts. Let's give Scriptisto another chance with a different language, Rust. One of the best features of Rust is its incredible package manager, Cargo. And by using Scriptisto, we can make use of crates inside of our scripts. So let's go ahead and try it out. Rather than writing our Rust script by hand, however, let's instead use one of the Scriptisto templates, which are available for a number of different languages, such as Go, Java, Node, and even Zig. The one we're interested in, however, is the Rust template. So let's go ahead and use it to create a new Rust script. Next, let's open it up inside of our text editor. If we take a look at our script is toe configuration, we can see it contains a few more lines. Let's inspect what each of these are doing. First of all, we have a key in our configuration called target underscore bin, which is used to tell script is toe which binary it should run once it's finished compiling. In our case, this is set to the binary that's built using the cargo build dash dash release command. Underneath this, we have another field called files, which is used by scriptisto to create any files inside of the build directory. In this case, we're defining a cargo.toml, which will allow us to easily add dependencies into our Rust script. You'll notice that we already have the clap dependency defined, which allows us to easily create command line arguments within Rust. Let's go ahead and run it by first opening up another terminal, changing the script to be executable, and then invoking it. You'll notice we're passing in an argument of input with a value of 10. This is supported by the clap configuration, which allows us to easily pass in arguments to this command. This is pretty cool, and probably around the same difficulty as using the git ops command with bash. Let's round off our Rust example by adding in the colored crate, which allows us to easily add terminal coloring to our console output. We can add this dependency by modifying the cargo file with the following line. Now we can use this crate as if we were inside of a Rust project. Let's go ahead and make the following changes to print the word Rust in the color blue. Now when we go and run this script, you'll see that our console output is colored, without us needing to remember any ASCII escape codes. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'd always wondered what it would be like to use compiled languages for writing scripts, and thanks to Scriptisto, we now have that option. However, whilst using a compiled language does provide some perks, ultimately I think I'll still be using Bash for the foreseeable future. Maybe that's a good excuse to create some Bash content.